What's up? Honor Mitch 26 I'm here to give you my Cage of Death 12 review, but this time I am joined by a special guest. Wanna introduce yourself? Uh sup guys. Double Cross King here hitting you up with a dual review with my good buddy Honor Hammer. Yes, and it's a company that I actually have not reviewed yet on my channel, and it's been now since June of 09. Never reviewed a CZW show before, but that is going to change today. Um, you know, I watched the show a couple weeks ago, and then uh, he, but Jake watched it. Drum Cross King, sorry, not going to break kayfabe there again. How dare I? Um, but Yeah, I know. Uh, but uh, overall, I mean, for... What I expected going in, I got, didn't get, but it was still, you know, I expected a cage, you know, I guess a cage of death, which is, would, would be, you know, the only crazy thing on the show, but we got a lot of other stuff, too, and, you know, from top to bottom, every match that was announced previous to, like, being an impromptu match was good, and I was, it surprised the hell out of me. I was honestly in shock, I mean... Uh, being into, you know, other companies, I didn't expect this from CZW, and I was very glad to see it. Uh, CZW has definitely kicked it up a couple notches. Uh, you could start seeing that summer, summer of 09, and then going into the DJ Hyde, uh, reign of terror, if you will, um, when he took over as ownership. And he structured the shows very, very well. Um, the first show you could see that was Cage of Death 11, uh, December of 2009, which was another great uh, CZW show. And this was very similar uh, um, structure-wise and very well done again. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. All right, let's get to the opener. First is a six-way uh, one-fall match where the winner of this match gets, an entrant, uh, gets a spot in the best of the best tournament coming up in 2011. Um, it's Akuma, formerly Grand Akuma, Fist and Chikara. Jonathan Gresham, who's now in the Osirian Portal in Chikara, Ruckus, Rich Swan, Ryan McBride, and Alex Cologne. Um, this I expected this to be a little more spotty than it actually was, but it was it, it was good for what it was. Um, could have gone a little longer. Um, and I thought they could have highlighted more individuals other than just Akuma. Um, and I guess the other only person they kind of highlighted here was Ruckus. So just I, I, got, I wanted I wanted to see Jonathan Gresham do his stuff. I wanted to see Rich Swan, Ryan McBride, and Alex Cologne, but we just saw kind of those two. It's not only great with it. Besides, it was it was just a, a good opener, a little sloppy here and there, but you know I, I want to forgive that. Um, I would say Alex Cologne suffered a lot, um, the most, even worse than uh, Jonathan Gresham. Rich Swan and Ryan McBride were at least get were at the very least getting a lot of props on commentary, being uh, the Irish Drive by tag team. Uh, but really, it was Akuma and Ruckus. Even though I really liked the exchanges between uh, Akuma and Gresham, uh, apparently they had a uh, a matchup uh, at the January season W show that was I'm sure was just fine. Um, yeah, sloppy. You know, just that just kind of happens in indie junior style wrestling, but not the sloppiest thing in the world. Fun opener. Yeah, I gave it three stars. And what did you give it, Jake? I agreed. All right. Um, now we are gonna get to a match that actually surprised the hell out of us. Um, or, or I can I don't want to speak for him, but me with actually how good it was. You know, I never liked Egotistico Fantastico. I thought kind of you know, I never really seen him in a full blown out match before. But I thought he was sloppy and just not that great. And I'd never I question my Ring of Honor ever brought him in. And same with Sam, Sammy Callahan. You know, I had watched his all four match, match there at Cannon, where, you know, I had kind of gone around on my opinion of him. So just to see these two put on a very good match on the second match on the show, just to press, uh, as Egotistico Fantastico goes now, is Robert Ego Anthony. You know, and he's now the number one contender for the CZW title, even I just ruined the match. But, you know, whatever. Um, anyway, just... Everyone who's on the CZW website would know that already, so... You or subscribe to them on YouTube, so you know, you know, it's not a matter of that. Um, but you know, I gave this three and a half stars. Just a solid, solid match. This was very good. This was, um, this was a match that showed how both guys can thrive, and I think this this, this match is very important in showing, you know, how important it is for two guys to feel comfortable. I feel either of these guys. Uh, in their 
Well, Ego had a very, very brief ROH tenure, and Sammy Callahan uh, had his, a, a bit of spots in 2008-2009. Um, neither were successful in any bit, uh, but you put them in the right environment in CZW, and they thrive a lot more. And this, this was, um, by all means, uh, an ROH-style match. Uh, would you agree? I would agree to a little bit. I'd say more, if anything, PWG, to be completely honest. Because it was, it, it was, it was, I mean, it was, it was that style. It was just in ring, you know, hard hitting, you know, just out of a, out of a, you know, I, I gotta say, you know, when ROH was, had, had its peak in FIP, I'd say this would be a, this would be the main event for the FIP world title, usually, you know. That's, that's kind of the, my style of match it was, and I was very surprised and very glad by it. Oh, yeah, definitely very good. Um, Egotistico Fantastico unmasking is probably the best thing, <laughs> considering how good he is as just an arrogant heel. I mean, once he took off the mask, he had a good look, you know, good charisma. And he's against Sammy Callahan, who is just such a whack job, but is such a fan favorite. And in the CZW concept setting, I can get I can get behind Sam. I mean. I'll agree with that. All right, I gave it three and a half. Uh, what did you give it? Three and three quarter. Very, very good uh, stuff, of, and, a, and a real you know treat for the, an early part of the show. I'll agree with that. Next, we got to the CZW uh, World Junior Heavyweight Title. Um, Adam Cole, who you know from Ring of Honor, with Mia Yim, and he is a heel in this company, versus AR Fox. Now. Uh, I want to make a point here, which I think Jake might agree upon. The Adam Cole in CZW is better than the Adam Cole we currently see in Ring of Honor. Now, the reason being that is that Adam Cole gets to show his mic skills. Adam Cole, you know, gets to do more. And hopefully we see that Adam Cole in ROH, we can. And I'm sure he can do it as a face. But just here, he is such a star. And it's really, really awesome to see. Adam Cole serves much more of a uh, Shawn Michaels role type heel. And does it very, very well. Um, and, you know, he had Mia Yim, who was getting the heat, you know, getting, you know, the whore heat, which, you know, a lot of your hardcore promotions tend to have with the women. Um, and he was going up against A.R. Fox, who started getting over um, earlier this year. But, you know, he had a, you know, with kind of a spotty style, which is unfortunately how too many guys in CZW get over. But I think A.R. Fox is... Uh, you know, for being spotty, he's not the spottiest guy in the world, and I think he works well, especially with a uh, heel like Adam Cole. I'll agree with that. Um, and, and as a match, this went, this went very, uh, I think this was good. It wasn't very good, but it was still pretty good. Um, you know, AR Fox got to do his move set, and then Adam Cole basically was his, you know, CZW self, and won that way. And, you know, this was, it was a good storyline driven match, and there was still good wrestling in it. And now I want to make a point that Mia Yim. Uh, I would not mind bringing her into Ring of Honor. You know, she is very talented. And, you know, I think as, as you know, as her role, if she portrays the same role that she does with Ring of Honor, maybe bring her in to be the manager for the All Night Express, you know, I think that would work perfectly. Yeah, put her with the right heel, um, and I think she'll do just as good as getting heel heat as uh, the heel himself. Yeah, I gave this three stars on the nose. I give this three and a quarter. Very, very good setup, uh, and gave you know, and made a junior match seem less like you know, a you know, a, you know, the same way that WCW treated the cruiserweights. This seemed like its own division, its own importance, and its own kind of story and background, uh, which I really enjoyed and a solid match. Then apparently uh, there was an impromptu match again for the world junior title. Adam Cole versus Tyler Veritas. Um, Tyler Veritas made it seem like he. Uh, I forget, maybe he won Best of the Best, or he won... So, oh, it was, uh, it must have been Tangled Web, actually. Uh, maybe Jake can clarify for you after I'm done speaking here, but... Um, this match was just okay. I mean, it was kind of impromptu, didn't even last that long. And basically the same exact finish, which is why I docked it a little bit. This uh, served its purpose well. Uh, former tag team partner getting back at... Adam Cole. Um, Tyler Veritas had won, I believe it was called the 1-8 uh, title shot opportunity. He cashed it in right here. 
after Adam Cole had a mildly grueling match with Air Fox as, you know, Air Fox was throwing all his junk at him and Adam Cole still survived and Tyler Verdas came in um, and beat him up quite a bit. Uh, you know, not the best technically or even hardcore-wise, but uh, served his purpose well for, you know, oh, no, surprise. And then having, um, oh, I don't want to spoil it, but it did it did well. <laughs> Yeah, we both gave this two stars on the nose. But then, before we move on to the rest of the show, I know we wanted to mention the Greg Excellent segment with his... Why don't you, actually, why don't you go into that, uh, Jake? Um, Greg Excellent is, to all those non-CZW fans, imagine Eric Young, that type of character, um, much larger, fatter, um, but very mobile, um, who has a history of strip, te- strip teasing and has even won the world junior title. When if you look at him, just by looking at him, he is clearly not a junior heavyweight. Um, and so we go into this segment, and Greg brings out Mama Excellent. Yes, he brings out his own mother, um, gives a heartfelt speech to the crowd, and then says, I'm sorry to Mama, and gives her a, what was supposed to be a Tiger a tiger Driver 98, but fell a little bit into an implant buster position, but either way, not good for Mama Excellent. And Greg Excellent was immediately remorseful, and everyone was just like, um, WTF. Yeah, um, I think it's also worth noting during this segment that, um, um, Greg Excellent's valet Kylie, or I think that's her name, um, was out during out during this as well, and kind of was the voice in between Mama Excellent and Greg Excellent during the entire promo while the hood felt speech, and after she had taken the pile driver slash Tiger Driver ninety eight, whatever you call it, um, it just it just that if she wasn't there, it would have been way worse. But I think Kylie, if that's her name, whatever the Valet, very, very excellent has been. Her name is, um, you know, she kind of added a little bit to the segment for me. So I want to, uh, I'm kind of interested to see where it goes, but it's kind of a weird storyline at that. I think, you know, it's weird, but not, um, let's just, say, let's, let's, let's just say not Russo weird. We'll leave it at that. I think that's fine. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, Next, we got the match with the vacant CZW tag titles. Philly's most wanted of Joker and Sabian, more notably of Blackout, uh, where you would know about those guys from, versus the Osirian Portal. Um, th- Why don't you go, Jake? Um, that yay was for the Osirian Portal. Um, big fan of them, um, wrestling and character-wise. I never, th- I, the last place I imagined them being was in a CZW tag title match. Uh, would you agree? I would agree, but in this tournament where they had eight teams originally, um, they kind of built them well, so I can see them in this match. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, and we got, and what ensued was some craziness. Philly's, Philly's most wanted being heels, especially the Black G's, a.k.a. Sabian, and Osirian and Portal being very over. And it was uh, Lucha-style rules. Uh, a la Chikara, basically guy can roll to the outside to to have the other man become legal, um, and that totally worked for this match, which I wish I wish, you know I love those rules. I think they do great in tag matches, especially matches that are more fast paced and more spotty, uh, which worked here perfectly. I'm glad they used those rules, and the ending was a really really good heel uh, move that I think you know brought this match up a little bit for me. Um, I would agree with most of that. Um, the only thing that I really didn't like is I thought, you know, the, the, the way this match was going, you know, I, I expected, you know, I did always expect Phillies Most Wanted to win this match. Maybe it was because Osirian Portal was new in TCW, I don't know, but it, it seemed a little too predictable of a heel ending to me. I don't know why, you know, I mean, it, and I didn't, I, I, you know, I had read the spoilers as soon as the show came out, but I, I pretty much had forgotten everyone who won. Um, since then, so it kind of was still refreshing for me, and I and I forgot that 
Phillies and Swanson had won this match. And I'm like, I still kind of was like, I knew they were going to win in the end. You know, that was the only thing that hurt it for me outside of what Jake said. So I did give it three and a quarter. I give it three and a half. I thought it was strong uh, junior tag action with a with a rather creative finish um, that got you know a lot of heel heat, um, and which led to I'll just mention this before Honor Hammer does um, them you know sending out a challenge and they just happen to drop the line man up. Oh, and guess who comes out? Surprise! It's the Briscoe brothers. And the Briscoe Brothers, I mean, I think they work perfect in a Ring of Honor, but their gimmick works for CCW plenty as well, being trucker uh, or just, just country boys, you know. I, th- I think that definitely works for CCW. Um, and now I think they're, they're, they're getting tag title shots, which, I mean, putting one of the best tag teams in the world, the belts on them, you know, that can never hurt. Mm-hmm. All right, next we got the CCW World Title Match. Um... John Moxley versus Homicide. Um, it still puzzles me to this day why John Moxley even dropped the belt during the summer for one week. I mean, that, that, that's, that was. A, I mean, I, uh, Nick Gage won it, but it was like, if you're gonna have John Moxley win it back the next week, I don't know why he even dropped it. But they explained well why he's just such a different champion and why you know he's had such a stranglehold on the CW World Title for like uh, almost a year now. I mean, he beat B Boy back at was it the twelfth anniversary show, or was it the eleventh anniversary show? It was the eleventh anniversary show because twelve was coming up in a couple weeks. This year, eleven was last year. So, you know, he's had a stranglehold on it. That's why I really like the commentators. I mean, they weren't great commentators. I mean, for indie commentators, they were good. Um, they did a good job of explaining why Moxley is such a beast, and I really, really like that because this that added to the match for me. Because Homicide, you know, has been off his game a little bit since coming back to the indies, but you know, in this match, Homicide did look good. You know, this is one of Homicide's best matches since coming back to the Indies. You know, a guy like Moxley, I mean, the kind of, w- w- the wrestle is, is such a different style. Brought that out of Homicide, you know. Maybe Homicide is turning the gate here, but then a week after this, he put on the match with Daniels at Final Battle, which was just stupid. But, you know, um, maybe Homicide, if he's given time, can turn the gate now. And I, that gave me a little bit of faith here. I know I gave it a good three and a half stars. Uh, I gave it a good three and a quarter. Um, I thought it um, it kind of served. It, it it was kind of a purpose server. I mean, you put Moxley in there with a name like Homicide. Um, you have him work the style that they should, which was a strong style. You know, with some you know with some fancy moves thrown in there, but you know, power moves, uh, power strikes, a lot of good strike exchanges. You know, I think they did. I think they did the whole they. Get on all f- they're on all fours and then they face each other all angrily. I think they did that twice, which I'm like, that's the, the they just did that earlier in the match. But I'm like, okay. And then they beat the crap out of each other, and I'm like, mm, I think I can forgive them. Um, I don't know, some something fell flat for me, but um, I still liked what I saw. Strong three and a quarter. All right, next we got to the match that I I mean, th- this is what put this DVD over to the top for me. Um, the mat and the match of the night for me. Um, Yuko Miyamoto, Big Japan Zone versus probably the best deathmatch wrestler CCW has, or one of them, uh, in Nick Gage, who decides to rob Banks after winning matches. Um, this, oh, yeah, um, he might rob a little more if he loses matches, but you know, <laughs> it, it's it's definitely. Uh, let's just get to the match instead of Nick, analyzing Nick Gage going to jail. Um, uh, Yuko Miyamoto knows how to work a death match. You know, among the, the you know, guys that can work CCW wrestlers among Big Japan's division, you have to have Miyamoto, you have, uh, a tier, you know, it's probably Sakamoto has to be at the top. I don't know how you can't put him there. You have to have Ryuji Ito there, Takashi Sasaki. I don't know how Jun Kasai would work. I mean, against Big Japan guys, Jun Kasai is awesome. But maybe against CCW guys, I just get the feeling maybe he would stand out a little more and just overshadow everyone in CCW when when Miyamoto made Nick Gage look like he be- would belong in there with Miyamoto. But, you know, this match was just awesome, just an odd but brutal brawl, you know. Everything you want out of an entertaining death match, you got in this match. Loved it. Four stars. This was a very, very, very good match. This was another case where something fell flat for me, which is why I'm not giving it the same rating as Honor Hammer. 
However, this, I heart Miyamoto so much. He was a huge focus for Big Japan during 2009 into 2010, which I, I followed Big Japan 2009 a lot more because something was going on that, that was fantastic. And when I heard that he was coming to the show to face Nick Gage, I was very excited. I thought Miyamoto was the right guy uh, to face a guy like Gage. You needed a larger man who could still be um, a little bit quicker than him, and Miyamoto's perfect. A guy like Takeda or Kodaka is quick but too small. A guy like Ito is big enough but not as fast. Perfect choice in Miyamoto. Sorry, I'm burping up some apple, so that's why I'm pausing. <laughs> um, they... They beat the crap out of each other. They threw in some insane spots that kind of worked in the way that those kind of spots work in Big Japan. Um, you know, you, I kind of love that mix of, you know, Necro Butcher, New Jack, and Masato Tanaka, which I believe Honor Hammer stole from me once as an analogy. You're welcome. Um... It was such a good analogy, but I did add my own little twist, which you didn't see, so, and Hiroshi Tanahashi, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. It was the hair, wasn't it? But I will say this, it was a very good analogy, and I like Jake using it. Let's get back to the reveal. You broke kayfabe! Ah, it's a swerve! Um, yes. Um, yeah, Nick Gage is not gonna be around much longer, and that stinks. But, um... Hey, good note for him to go out on. Good match. Uh, fun setup for the main event. Yay. All right. Um, and I and you know the and I want to add the ending spot to this match was crazy. Especially considering how it looked in the CZW arena. I think in any other arena it wouldn't have had the same effect as how it looked in, um, in the arena, the ECW arena. New Alhambra, whatever the hell they're calling it today. And knowing both wrestlers' movesets, um, you you can think of maybe a finish, but then this just topped that being crazy. I'm like, okay, that you know that was one of the craziest things I've seen all year. Mm -hmm. And I might add, um, throughout the show, TV the uh, the CZW Wired TV champion Drew Gulak was complaining about officials. He was brought out as the official for this match. He kept preventing both men from using hardcore items. They beat the crap out of Gulak, and they beat the crap out of each other. Yep. All right. Um. And let's get to the main event: Cage of Death, Suicide Kings of Devin Moore, Dysfunction, Scotty Vortex, and Danny Havoc against Cult Fiction of Brian Damage Thirteen, Drake Younger, the Golden Boy Drake Younger, and Masada. Now let me say this: I said this in my Orwich video briefly, but we'll only get into context here. If you're going to have what they're billing as the most violent match in wrestling, and it takes around 30 to 45 minutes to set up a, a just the cage and the weapons for a single match, have your commentators or someone explain why these two teams are almost beating each other to death. I do not know. Just basically, you know, you know, I've I've read CCW results here and there, but you know, I wasn't full and fledged with CCW this entire year, or pretty much ever. So I have no idea why these guys are beating the absolute hell out of each other, and that you know that that stopped this match from going to the next level for me. Why in the hell are these two teams fighting? You know, the wrestling is good, and you know the characters are great, but why in the hell are these two teams fighting? If they, it doesn't have that substance to it, why in the hell is you know, why in the hell does this matter? That's why C and Generica was such an awesome match that had the perfect amount of substance and style to it. Where in the hell was the substance here? It wasn't being explained by the commentator. Yeah, do you know the story, Jake, at all? Uh, yes. Uh, earlier in the year, uh, Cult Fiction had a bit of a rebirth. Uh, their, um, their manager, aptly named Billy Graham, uh, that's creepy. Um, if you see this guy and then consider that his name is Billy Graham, it's, it's, um, disturbing a little bit, to say the least. Um, he kind of got it uh, rebirthed uh, with brain damage and the hurt team, as I believe it's supposed to be pronounced. To hurt team, the way it's look in the description box. That's how it's spelled. That's why I'm doing the funny pronunciation. Um, 
And then partway through the year, uh, Masada, who has gotten very good at death matches over in Big Japan over the years, um, came back and was supposed to fight Cult Fiction and Retro. It's a swerve. He's in Cult Fiction. Um, they were feuding with the Suicide Kings, then including Drake Young. Drake Younger turned on the Suicide Kings, not uh, not joining Cult Fiction, but aligning himself with uh, with them. And he became instead of the Psycho Shooter, he became the Golden Boy. Um, the Suicide Kings hate Cult Fiction; they hate Drake Younger for turning on them, and that's why we have a war game style Cage O Death Numero Twelve. Thank you very much. And I think it's worth adding as well that Scotty Vortex is personally. Has a little bit more invested in Drake Younger than this match, so that's why that explains something that happens in the match um, that I personally they explained right after it happened. So I'm like, uh, 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 at first I was like, why the hell did that happen? And then they like explained it. I'm like, oh, okay, got it. But as a as a match, this was good. This was your definition of you know everything that was kind of really complex and you know it was very good. You know I've seen Cage of Deaths and I I don't know the number. I'm thinking it's got to be six, or, you know, the one with, it was on the WSX DVD, it was Blackout versus Team Cash, I believe, it was late 04, with Jack Evans and, you know, <coughs> that crazy spot with uh, a couple of people. Uh, I, I, I don't remember. But, um, you know, th that match was awesome for a death match. This match was not, you know, this match still, was still very good, though. Now, last year's Cage of Death was a one-on-one -on -one encounter that was done incredibly well between Danny Havoc and Sammy Callahan. Now, this year and last, I thought both had very good stories going into them. I do not consider this quite as highly as last year's, because that had some level of intense hate that was borderline frightening because of Sammy Callahan's character. But this worked very well. I'm a huge War Games mark. It's not even funny. Like, it's, it's almost scary how much I love war games and all war game style matches. Hell, I even give Lethal Lockdown a chance every year. They usually disappoint a little bit in some ways, but, you know, I always give them a chance. I give any war game style match a chance. And I like the way war games worked here, especially with the way some people went in, especially the uh, Scotty Vortex entrance that led to some wackiness and a mid-match Drake Younger promo, which was... Which totally worked. <laughs> so, um, I, I don't want to say every single spot. Let's just say there's high spots, but I think they, you know, they're appropriate. And there's some aftermath that is also appropriate. And this was by no means bad, by no means amazing. This was just very, very good. Yeah, and I think it was aptly the main event of the show. Um, but overall, we we agree on the rating of the show is an 8.75, which on my scale is almost amazing as an overall show. You know, for an introduction to CZW, this w this is an awesome show to use. I would definitely recommend picking this up. Um, you can go to Smart Rank Video and buy this. You know, any 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 less comments, Jake? I'm dying. I'm dying over here. Um, yeah. This is a great example of how much CZW has improved. Uh, in the past year. I'm still dying. I choked on some apple. For the love of God, wrap up this review. And for Double Cross King Jake, I'm Eric on our Hammer 26. Hope you enjoyed the review, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. So